It is another Thursday and it is your favorite show, The Regional Review. My name is Enzo Amwele, the correspondent for Namibia Media Holdings in the Central North. Before we continue with our show today, today we celebrate Ascension Day. Please do stay tuned. Up in our news, Ojon Super Regional Governor James Wereka has uploaded debaters at the Ochoarongo debate competition last week. Wereka said that debaters have done themselves wonders by engaging the mind provoking sport. He added that debating helped learners to see the power of deploying rational reason arguments and compelling evidence in action. Well, debating is indeed an active sport and keeps your mind active. Continue with our news. B2 Gold Namibia has sponsored over 200,000 for the construction of the Otavi Vaccination Center. According to the Regional Health Director Keba Timoteos, he says that usually all COVID-19 issues were attended to in a garage that was meant for, for, for the ambulance. He also urged the public to adhere to COVID-19 health regulations as cases are rising. The, the vaccination center and sitting and thinking back that you know it was mere two years ago that COVID made its entry into society and if you think back when COVID was announced a lot of people didn't believe it they said it's a myth it's just a, a flu a very severe case of the flu and very few people want to pay attention to it and as time went by it got closer and closer to everybody and as it got closer to the persons who you cared for you started believing in COVID. You started taking the actions to prevent it. And so time has passed and a vaccination was developed and very similar with the vaccinations. Excuse me. Very similar with vaccinations. When the vaccinations entered the market, people said, no, it won't help, it's a myth. And just did not want to go. But as time went by, people started to believe in the vaccinations. And it was on that premise that vaccination centres were established. And a bit of background to this vaccination centre, and I'm just taking a step back to, to last year around about this time, when B2 Gold started talking about setting up or assisting the Tavi Town Council with getting a vaccination centre set up here. We first had a look at two houses, but the houses were a bit too far out of town. And it was a problem getting the vaccinations there, people had to travel, so it was inconvenient. And we all know life is about convenience at times. And it was on that premise that we decided to donate this prefab building and set up a vaccination centre in the heart of the town where people can come. It's easier for people to get to, it's easier for the nurses to get to, and as well as the vaccinations. So we all encourage people to go for the vaccinations. And because it's convenient, we're hoping people will now come here. We've seen it in Ochivarongo, their vaccination centres in the town, and people line up to go there for vaccinations. We set up a vaccination centre on the mine, and since we've set it up, a lot of people have gone for their vaccinations, and it's because it's right there. So hopefully the word will spread, and people will start using the vaccination centre, and it's on that I'd like to hand it over, and thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing is more important to our council than to bring services to the masses, to our people. That is what we have pledged and we have committed ourselves to bring services to our people. 
The inauguration of this sender establishes a strategic partnership between the Council, Bito called Namibia, Ojozenduba Regional Council, Otavi Constituency, and the Ministry of Health and Social Services. Just to mention but a few. My sincere thanks goes to the Namibian government and Bito Gold Namibia, in particular for its steadfast, continuous support in this important endeavor. And we look forward to a long and fruitful partnership. Community development is when community members take ownership of their challenges and then they hold hands and they look for solutions of how to address these challenges. When we, as different stakeholders, and as a community, come together and hold hands to look for solutions for our community, that's where our community will be developed. That is indeed a milestone there by the Otavi Town Council and we urge every Namibian to get vaccinated. Next up in our news, the Ministry of Urban and Rural Development held a one-day workshop with regional councillors and local authority councillors, CROs and COs, mayors and also governors of uh, regions in Ochivarongo last week, Thursday, uh, under the theme Strengthening Councillors and Staff Working Relations in Regional Councils and Local Authorities. People getting an opportunity to study in the institution of Ocho Municipality Technical because I understood that you cannot lead a thing where you alone shine, but your people here underground are not shining. We are a team, so it's a given, and that's why I believe strongly in team building. Honorable Minister, you would ask my officials, they would tell you, I believe in team, I don't like leaders who come in with egos into positions and we have that serious problem when it comes to ministry of heaven and rural development when we are told i am who you are who you have no say in this and so on these are small things showing ego you would find a counselor you are seven in a council meeting saying i was born and bred here so what so he's saying the other person was not born and bred here just because my surname is Shea, you think you own the region where we come from. I'm from Kunene, I was born in Ocho. I didn't give an application form to God to say, I must be born from Oshuambo speaking parents. It's your problem and your ego. I'm not Oshuambo speaking. I mean, I'm on record about that. I'm a Namibian. I can go and recite now in Orange, and nobody will tell me where to stay. So if you, as a leader, limit yourself to things of this nature, Honorable Minister, is where we are in terms of local and regional governments currently. We are lead ego very strongly. Ego, egoism, individualism, tendencies of having posterity and want to show that you are the one who is better than everybody else. They don't have capacity, I have capacity. Capacity that you got from where? Did you read any book that others cannot access? Did you go to any school that others cannot go to? Are you, are you implementing a different law that others are not implementing? That is egoism. But the principles of good governance are going to the United Nations Economic and Social Commission on Asia and the Pacific, UNESCO. It says the eight principles of good governance. Number one, participation. The element of participation in leadership is your key. Whenever you are taking a decision, ensure that those that are going to be affected by your decision are consulted accordingly. The stakeholders that you are working with ought to be participating in your leadership that you are busy. Everybody must buy into the idea and everybody must be able to contribute accordingly so that it becomes our idea and our program. Not my idea and my program. That's participation. Running very quick to extreme conclusions. No, we don't do that. We don't do that, honorable leaders. We don't do that. Where in the law that is governing the affairs of the sub-national government, sub government, 
where it is provided for in the law that a council should in consultation with the consultation with the minister do A, B, C, D then that is what the law is requiring us to do. There is no alternative to do, to do it otherwise. Wherever the law is requiring from us to do whatever we want to do in consultation, with the consultation, after the consultation of the minister, I like the word, it's a must, Governor Kunene. It's a given. Because when we do not do that, what have we done? We have violated that specific section, provision of the Act. Viewers, that brings us to the end of our new segment here today. Stay tuned for our interview. Hello, everyone. My name is Clementine Fishikongo, currently teaching at Osvarongo Secondary School. I started with my education at uh, Omafa Combined School and then Haudano Secondary School. Then I went to UNAM. After that, I went to Midland State University in Zimbabwe and currently doing my master's in English and Applied Linguistics with NAST. Um, I feel overwhelmed. It's, it's a great achievement being awarded as the overall best performer in the region, English teacher for ordinary level, that's grade 11. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite a great feeling. I can't explain it. Um, re really, really excited. Um, my secret to teaching, I can say, um, is just being involved. I, I don't just teach, I have conversations with learners. I, I let them uh, enjoy the, the, the lesson. I, I, um, my lessons are always learner-centered, whereby learners are doing the most, but I, I'm just there to facilitate. And, um, and I don't have much to say to other teachers, but I would just like to say, you should enjoy the, the teaching process. It's quite a learning process. We should be patient with our learners because they are from different backgrounds uh, and uh, different beliefs. So we should really take it uh, step by step when we are teaching. You seem very passionate about teaching. Did you always want to become a teacher? Yeah, I have. Uh, because um, I think I, 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 I've always believed that I have so much to share with people especially young people, and so much to share in terms of encouraging um, people to um, do better. And um, with teaching, I know it's a platform where I can really share my knowledge, share my, my, my energy, share my experiences, and, and I, I, I love it here. I really do love it here. Tell us, for how long have you been a teacher? I've started 2018, and... Uh, um, this will mark now five years, I think, four, four to five years, actually. And I must say, I like it, I like it, I like it here. I have no complaint. So when you joined the teaching profession, uh, there was the old curriculum, and now there is a new curriculum introduced. What is your take on the new curriculum? Um, the new curriculum uh, 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 is a very, very, very good curriculum, if I must say. I appreciate it a lot, and I know the whole idea or the whole logic behind this is to teach our learners in depth, to teach uh, critical thinking, to let them think um, out of the box. And the new curriculum also has, uh, the, um, uh, it, it accommodates everyone, if I can say that. But I must say it has been challenging for me as a teacher as well and learners, we have been struggling, but we are getting there. But um, I would just like to say it, it, um, it, it's a curriculum that we shouldn't do away with. It's really um, opening our minds to so many things and allowing our learners to experience and to 
really um, get a chance also to study overseas and yeah. So can you perhaps tell us what was your most memorable moment in the classroom? Uh, my most, I, I have so many, like I believe every time I enter the class and I see my learners, it's just, um, um, it, it, it's a beautiful feeling, beautiful day. I will come from my house having a bad day or bad morning and when I just start talking to my learners or when they start talking or we start um, having our classes, it's just, I, I can't explain it actually. I don't have a specific one, but I can say um, the whole time I'm, um, um, with these learners, it's just um, a blessing. With that said, I thank you so much for uh, this platform, the Regional Review, and for letting me ex uh, express my experiences uh, uh, as a teacher. And I wish all the best. Uh, I wish you guys all the best, including the teachers, the learners, and everyone watching. Thank you. That was indeed an interesting and inspirational interview from one of our lovely teachers from the region. Now we head over to our weather report. Africa Good Morning is a current affairs program that brings you the latest from Southern Africa and beyond. News, economics, sport, weather, interviews, and so much more. For any advertising or news-related queries, contact agm at synergy.com.na. Africa Good Morning, bringing Africa to you. Okahanya, Chavarongo and Tume are sunny and pleasant for the rest of this week with daytime temps in the high 20s and night times at around 10 degrees. Krotfontein is sunny and delightful during the day but nighttime temperatures are around 6 degrees. Okokarara is sunny and beautiful during the day but nights are cold with a low of minus 1 expected next Tuesday. Viewers, that brings us to the end of our show here today. And we all know all, all good things do come to an end. And I hope to see you guys again next week, Thursday, same time. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we are welcome to another exciting edition.